Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be talking about a component system and how it's very useful when scripting and how you can use a powerful concept like a component system to your advantage. So first let's look at our basic example to see uh, why we might need a component system and then we'll talk about what a component system is. So just starting off here, we have two folders for color parts and uh, transparency parts. And you'll see that I have these two scripts where it has this uh, behavior of, for the transparency part, it sets a random transparency. And for the color part, it sets a random color. And if we run it, we can see that it works as intended. The transparencies are changed and the colors are changed. And then if we want to add another part in the color part or add another part in the transparency part, we can see that the behavior we've defined makes it really easy to extend that. But um, what are some issues here that you might be able to see? So something I immediately think of is anytime we maybe want to group things in different groups in our workspace, color part, transparency part, see we just put it under this parts folder. Uh, and this this goes back to the other video I made talking about cleaning up your place and how to make your game cleaner. I'll have that up up here. Uh, it'll probably pop up right now. But uh, if we move the hierarchy of our parts like this, you'll see that immediately we're going to get errors, right? Because we're defining, we're talking about this path right here to these parts. And if we reorganize our place, then uh, these parts are not going to work as expected. And what if we wanted to make another part that was transparency color parts, right? Then we'd have to make an entirely new script that does the transparency and the color. And we'd have to add them in this folder and we'd have to set the right path. And soon as you start creating more and more of these like complex combinations of things that you want to have, um, then you're going to need to start finding other solutions besides just creating a script and referencing a folder of things, right? So this is a, this is a common thing that a lot of games run into. And the way we can fix this is with a component system. So what is a component system? So in our case, uh, and component can be used freely. That's just the word I'm using, but, uh, the component system tags an instance and then automatically runs a script that gives it a defined behavior. And when the part or the instance is cleaned up, uh, the behavior is cleaned up as well. That's an important part. In our case, we should see that the transparency parts here should have the behavior of changing transparency and the color parts here should have the behavior of changing color. And when we want to create a combination of these two, and this is just a model or a, a theoretical view, See how I've, I've combined them here. Mm -hmm. Say we want to make a combination here where it does transparency and color. That's where this system becomes handy. We can create one instance with the transparency tag and also add the color tag and the behaviors should overlap. So how are we going to go about writing this? Well, first let's create a module script for our component module. And I'm going to go through and define some of the functions we need. And thinking about it, some things that we're going to need are uh, loading components. So I've quickly laid out the few functions that we're going to need. So I'm going to write the load function now, and this is basically the entire core of the component system. Hey guys, so this is me later in editing. I realized that I didn't explain the function down below. So the component.load basically takes in either an instance or a table of module scripts. If it's a table, we run the load function with that table. Or if it's an instance, we get the children of that instance and then do the same thing with that table of module scripts. So I've just written out the load function. What it does is it takes this input of module scripts and if it's not a module script, we continue the iteration. Uh, we load the module script and get the tag. Uh, if an instance is added, we perform this action, which essentially adds the instance to this cached instances table. And we uh, create a new instance of the component. 
which I'll rename to new component to be more clear, uh, by calling the module new dot new function. And then when an instance is removed, we go through all the components in that instance and we just uh, call destroy if there's a destroy method on that component and we set the component equal to nil. Down here, we take all the existing instances and we execute the initializer for the components with this instant added function. And then we make it so that for that tag, anytime an instance is added or removed, we call these added and remove functions. So we just bind the whole thing all up together. So now that we've created this, let's write out some definitions again for our color parts and our transparency parts. Okay, so I've just quickly defined the transparency part and the color part definitions for these components. And let's not forget to add the tags in these modules. And you'll notice something that's important about this is that each of these components is a class. So something else that's nice is with any of these parts, if there's any specific data that we want to um, extend on these parts, say for color part like this one here, we made a folder under it of brick colors that was only colors that we wanted it to randomize between. Uh, we could define that behavior in the transparency part component and say that if it has this uh, information, then we perform this action. So now all we need to do is we can rename our color parts here and I'm gonna disable these so they don't interfere. So now we need to use the component system and tie it in with the components we've defined. And it's that simple to get the component system going. We just have to define it and then call the load function. And something I like to do is put all my components in a folder under this script. And I'll usually have another folder as well for my modules. And that ties into my module loader video, which I made in the past. And that will be up here. That's the second time I've messed that up. But it'll be up here, um, probably pop up in the video right now. So if you want to go check that out. So now that we've defined this and we have our two classes, what we need to do is just go through and tag all our parts. So with the tag editor open, which we can find under view and tag editor, we can highlight all these color part instances and create a new tag, color part, and check the box to tag them. And then we can highlight all these ones and we can call these transparency part and tag them and our transparency color part we give both of those tags so hopefully if we've written it right these parts should these parts should change transparency and these parts should change color and this one should do both and as we can see these parts change transparency these parts change color, and this one does both. And that's really the basics of the component system. Let's review the things that we wrote up in our notepad. Uh, when we tag an instance, it automatically runs a script that gives it a behavior, whether it's color or transparency, and it's clean. So back in the place, uh, we can see that all of these parts have their own defined behavior. And if we even go as far as to put this part's Anywhere in the workspace, we stick them under the base plate, they'll still get the same behavior. And it's nice as well because say we have, you know, two different groups of transparency parts, another transparency color part, more color parts, uh, you know, 
we just duplicate the amount of parts that we have. Say we have this many, you know, we can keep adding, keep extending and keep creating in different parts of our game. But all of these components will still have the same behavior. Notice our color transparency, transparency and color all have the same behavior that we've defined and tagged for them. And that's where this becomes really powerful is you can take parts of your game and stick them elsewhere and not have to worry about uh, where they're located in the, in the file structure, um, whether or not they'll have a different behavior, having to recode the same behavior. You just create a new instance of whatever it is, tag it with the behavior that you want to give it, and then it, the component system will automatically load and define the behaviors for that instance. If you like this video, have any questions or want to hear more about it, uh, leave a comment down below. Uh, if you liked it, leave a like. And if you want to see more content like this, subscribe. Thank you guys. Have a wonderful day.